The International Space Station is getting old. However, NASA does not want to build another one at taxpayers' expense. Oh, well how thoughtful of them. Instead, it wants to be just one of many customers for commercial space stations. But it wants to be sure something is ready before the ISS reaches the end of its service, and avoid a space station gap not being able to perform research in low Earth orbit. Fortunately, the ISS may have a wealth of private successors. Prominent among them is the plan to build a private space station by Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. If this space station is possible in the near future, how soon can we expect it? And does it meet the requirements of becoming the successor of the ISS? Let's find out more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. But first, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the Great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you won't miss any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. And if you're all set, then let's dive right in on today's episode. Blue Origin unveiled Monday its plan for a private space station called Orbital Reef, which is expected to deploy between 2025 and 2030. It's described as a commercially developed, owned, and operated space station to be built in low Earth orbit, according to Blue Origin. The station will open the next chapter of human space exploration and development by facilitating the growth of a vibrant ecosystem and business model for the future. This unique destination will offer research, industrial, and international and commercial customers the cost-competitive end-to-end services they need, including space transportation and logistics, space habitation, equipment accommodation, and operations including onboard crew. Orbital Reef will be operated as a mixed-use business park in space. Shared infrastructure efficiently supports the proprietary needs of diverse tenants and visitors. It features a human-centered space architecture with world-class services and amenities that is inspiring, practical, and safe. As the premier commercial destination in low Earth orbit, Orbital Reef will provide the essential infrastructure needed to scale economic activity and open new markets in space. Reusable space transportation and smart design accompanied by advanced automation and logistics will minimize cost and complexity for both traditional space operators and new arrivals, allowing the widest range of users to pursue their goals. The open system architecture allows any customer or nation to link up and scale to support demand. Module berths, vehicle ports, utilities, and amenities all increase as the market grows. If all goes according to plan, then it will be a great destination in space. So, is Blue Origin confident enough to build Orbital Reef on its own? The name Orbital Reef is meant to convey that, like coral reefs on Earth, it will be an ecosystem. In this case, an ecosystem of businesses, large and small, selling services to one another and otherwise interacting as a business community. And Orbital Reef is a collaboration involving some heavy hitters in the space industry. Blue Origin will provide some modules and its new Glenn Heavy Lift rocket, which is scheduled to lift off for the first time in late 2022, will be the primary launcher used to get station hardware to space. Boeing, which is a key partner in the ISS program, will be in charge of orbital reef operations and maintenance. The company will also provide science modules and its Starliner capsule will deliver people and cargo to the outpost. Sierra Space's expandable Large Integrated Flexible Environment, or LIFE modules, will serve as Orbital Reef's primary living quarters. The company's Dream Chaser space plane will also be available for possible cargo and crew delivery, company representatives said. Red Wire Space will provide solar arrays and other deployable structures. The company, whose subsidiary Made in Space has sent multiple 3D printers to the ISS, will also provide payload operations and support research and manufacturing work. Genesis Engineering Solutions will contribute a single-person spacecraft, which will allow Orbital Reef visitors to take spacewalks from the outpost. And Arizona State University will lead a consortium of 14 universities that provide research, advice, and public outreach. But the real question is, how much will it cost to build this space station? Executives representing the companies of the team declined to specify how much each expects to invest in Orbital Reef. However, Janet Cavandi, president of Sierra Space, noted that its parent company, privately held Sierra Nevada Corporation, has put more than $1 billion into Dream Chaser development and an unspecified amount into the LIFE modules. 
and Blue Origin Vice President Brent Sherwood estimated it would be at least an order of magnitude less than the International Space Station's estimated $100 billion price tag. If you know what, how much that means, please let me know in the comments below. Sherwood also said the team is not going to give a specific number on how much the Orbital Reef Space Station will cost, adding that the financial numbers are commercially sensitive. So is Blue Origin alone in the race to build a space station? No doubt the space station race is heating up. NASA Director of Commercial Spaceflight Phil McAllister said that the program received roughly about a dozen proposals from a variety of companies for Commercial LEO Destinations, or CLD, contracts. So Bezos' company is not alone. With NASA planning to retire the International Space Station by the end of the decade, the CLD program represents an effort to turn to private companies for new space stations, with the space agency expecting to save more than $1 billion annually as a result. Last week, another private space station was announced by a separate team of companies. Nanoracks, Voyager Space, and Lockheed Martin are building a station called Starlab, which plans to be operational by 2027. NASA has also begun funding the ambitions of one company under a separate contract from the CLD program. Having awarded Axiom Space $140 million, Axiom plans to build modules that will connect to the ISS. When the ISS retires, Axiom then would detach its modules and turn them into a free-flying space station. So, which space station will have a better chance of competing? As planned, Orbital Reef consists of a power system, a core module, a life habitat, and science module, and a Genesis spacecraft, Sherwood said. This initial outpost will feature 830 cubic meters of pressurized volume and be able to support up to 10 people. For comparison, the ISS has 916 cubic meters of internal volume, which is equivalent to that of a Boeing 747 jet. Meanwhile, the four-person Starlab will have a habitat module with 340 cubic meters of volume. But Orbital Reef will keep growing over time, with many more modules eventually being attached, if all goes according to plan, that is. And project team members wanted to serve many customers around the globe. Mike Gold, Executive Vice President for Civil Space and External Affairs at Redwire, said that this isn't an American station. This will be a global station that will carry on the proud international legacy of the ISS. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to pat us on the back, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your thoughts or any funny ideas in the comments down below so we know where to improve upon and to give us a, you know, a bit of a laugh. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, you can also show us that you support us by giving us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.